Good morning, afternoon, I suppose, really. Uh, Cowboy Jim up here in Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada, in what we refer to as the Nilworth. And um, lovely day, really nice day up here, sun shining and all that sort of stuff. And I was having um, a pleasant time. Uh, well, I always have a pleasant time with the Lord unless I've done something really stupid. And uh, then it's time to repent and, you know, that sort of stuff. You've probably been there and done that. Um, but I was having a very pleasant time watching Fox News down in the States to do with the full eclipse uh, uh, from the north end of Mexico up through Texas, Arkansas, so on. And, uh, and I was remembering in Scripture uh, in the very um, time of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, uh, coming back and planting his feet on the Mount of Olives outside Jerusalem, I think on the east side, doesn't matter. And um, I don't think it matters. My, may, my. my. Um, and there being a time, um, I'll just read it uh, for you if I can take that liberty and and uh, it reads, uh, uh, Zechariah chapter 14, uh, verse 6, And it shall come to pass in that day when Christ comes back uh, to start hanging a licking on the armies of the world uh, for what they did against uh, Israel and indirectly against God. And um, so I start again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. Okay. I, um, I love scripture. I, I really do. Um, because I choose to believe in something bigger than myself. It's not hard. I'm not that tall, but size does not matter uh, in uh, this world that we live in. It's attitude that counts. And uh, many people are so narcissistic that they, uh, they have this wonderful belief system that they themselves are God. Well, I'll just tell you, um, you who suffer from narcissism, you're not God. You may think you are and act as though you are, but you're not. Uh, the, the day will come uh, when you individually um, will meet God and you will give answer to that self-same God, uh, the creator. Um, I moved my shoulder a bit. Okay. And you will give answer to God. I don't care what religion you are. Um, I don't care whether you believe in God or you don't. Um, you believe in Allah or you don't. It's, it's your choice. I place my belief in God, the creator. Recognizing the magnitude of God's love by his writ, I look at my Bible, by his written word, as well as the, his word is spoken into my heart. When I pray, I take time to listen. Um, the answer that I hear is not God's word. It is God's voice. It's his intent. It's his purpose in fellowshipping with me. But I take everything that I hear when I'm praying, which is talking to God, listening. That's a novel idea. And I compare what God speaks about uh, to Scripture. That's the benchmark for me. Um, I go back to that wonderful Scripture. It is appointed unto each individual to work out their own salvation in fear and trembling before God. That's what I've done most all my life. 
various points in time, I was not as successful, shall we say, as other times. Um, but a brother of mine at work, he asked me one night when my truck was too low on fuel and we were waiting for the fuel truck to come and, and uh, empower my truck with a, uh, oh, I don't know, 3,000 liters of diesel or something. And those trucks, they haul heavy loads, but they also use fuel, diesel. And um, he, he had said, uh, I, I, I told him uh, on the radio, I said, man, uh, I, I, I'm about out of fuel and the fuel trucks are going. He said, uh, uh, and he'd get in touch with them. And, and uh, they said they were uh, just going to fill up uh, their, their fuel truck and then they would uh, uh, be right back. And he, he said, Jim, he says, uh, I'll, I'll come get you. You don't have to sit in a cold truck and uh, you can sit and, and have the honor of, um, well, he didn't say that, but to me it is an honor when I get to sit with one of my supervisors and and uh, and and just be myself. I, that, that's all I am, is just myself. And um, he said, Jim, um, have you always been the way you are? And I, I, I knew what he meant. We, we had talked before. And... Um, he, he, at one point in time, a uh, fellow truck driver who has gotten really stuck, uh, he came walking over to a uh, supervisor's truck, and somehow I, I was I was with the supervisor again. And and uh, this fellow truck driver, uh, I remember his name. I don't use names on on YouTube stuff. But he, he came over and he said, Jim, you are the most positive person that he had ever met. And I thought, mm, I have gotten better at that the older I've gotten. I remember a young German guy who had come to ask uh, for a job at my cabinet shop at the old overpass. And, and um, I told him I couldn't hire him and told him why. And uh, he said, you are the most uh, negative person I ever met. So uh, things have improved with time. My brother, my supervisor, uh, he said, Jim, have you always been the way you are? And I said, you know, I have tried to. So in answer to that question, I'd have to say yes. But I have gotten better with time, and uh, I believe uh, that that's one of the few joys of of uh, growing old. And um, I I don't feel old. Uh, I don't act old, uh, but I'm not young anymore. I was young in my late forties. I was in the best physical shape of my entire life. Uh, early 20-year-old, I fought in and lost uh, in the Canadian Championship in Judo in Toronto. And I was in pretty good shape then, but nothing compared to when I was 47, 48. But I'm not 47 or 48 now. Um um, nigh on to 75 come October. And I tell people that and they don't believe me. And sometimes they'll even ask, well, what year were you born? And uh, that would be 1949. It's shocking. But the joy that I've had in living this life, getting to know God and Jesus, and Scripture, um, totally unparalleled in in my life ever. Like, I was taught by God how to be a finished carpenter and a cabinet maker, 
and uh, how to deal with horses and how to hunt uh, fish. Um, he gave me an understanding beyond common sense of what and how I should be and behave. And it's been a, um, a wonderful process in time. I mentioned in the earlier video, in the last video, uh, that I had gone south um, to watch my grandson uh, perform at, at a wonderful time. And um, I, I tried to video as much of it as I could, and if I can find my video camera in my luggage, I don't. I don't use luggage. I, um, I I use those wonderful bags that uh, you get at the grocery store. Um, I saw something on Google or something, and it said uh, uh, the footprint made in the making of cloth bags to carry your groceries out in, in place of plastic, and the footprint. Rec uh, recognized uh, in the making of that plastic, uh, you would have to use your cloth bag 7,000 times. Well, the grocery stores would be very happy about that. But I never seem to be able to go to a grocery store and remember to take my grocery cloth bags with me. So I'm always buying one or two more. Well, at least they won't get worn out. And if you had to use it 7,000 times before you broke even, in terms of the footprint, which we in North America care about, and the rest of the people who hate us around the world, they don't care at all. Footprint? What footprint? Snow? Sand? That's the only thing they care about is making money. And we used to care about making money. Now, our governments care about how to spend money, whether they have it or not. And their solution is to increase taxes. It's ridiculous. I mean, when I was a child, uh, if someone gave you a dime, 10 cents, that was big time. You could walk down to the corner store um, uh, owned by uh, Jim Morgan, wonderful ex-placeman uh, from Toronto, ran this little tiny store, and you could buy a bottle of Coke, and you could buy uh, a five-cent uh, chocolate bar that was bigger than uh, a two-dollar chocolate bar nowadays. I mean, it was. It, it, the dollar was, our dollar was worth so much that a dime went a long way. Um, a dime goes nowhere. I get them. I, I don't pick them up off the counter. I just leave them as a tip. Sometimes I have to throw more with them because I, I don't want nickels and dimes and quarters. They don't represent anything that is of value. And furthermore, they, they can't buy anything. Um, a one cent uh, bubblegum thing uh, is like five cents or 10 cents now or more or worse. And it's because dollars have been made to be of little or no value in terms of when you're purchasing. When you're selling something, it's the same stupidness. You can get uh, a price uh, for something. Um, like I, I bought a 71 Corvette for uh, $4,500 uh, in 73. Uh, Hardtop convertible Corvette Stingray. I, I mean, I spent... Uh, hmm, Two grand on it. Uh, got a real good paint job. Uh, hooker header and side pipes. Krager SS mag wheels. And Mickey Thompson tires. 
Nowadays, well, example, uh, I put tires and rims on my big Dodge and uh, a leveling kit on the front end of the Dodge because Dodges are always looking like they're going downhill unless you have the hammer down, they kind of level out. Those tires, rims, and leveling kit cost me $10,000. I mean, things are crazy. So I, I, I watched the eclipse on, uh, on TV, and I listened to the awe with which people spoke of nature and so on, and how amazing it was that uh, it would neither be, uh, well, in Scripture it says, uh, It'll be a day knowing to God that is neither day nor night, but rather dusk for about six hours. But you, you hear these people uh, uh, watching the eclipse and losing their cotton picking minds because it's such a novel idea. And it is the moon coming between the sun and earth. And the resultant uh, cooling down... Um, change in wind, change in, well, the temperature cooling down, um, and just just things that are unusual, unless you have read about solar eclipses. Well, what is going to happen in end times, uh, not done by nature, um, people have wanted to put God in a box, in a corner, uh, cover him there so that he can't see. Hey, that's so stupid. God is omnipotent. He has the ability to be everywhere at once. His understanding is such that I don't have to do something wrong for him to know. If I think about doing something wrong, according to Scripture, uh, I've already done it. And so that is why scripture says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you take time uh, to study scripture, you will walk into uh, what we refer uh, to as being uh, end times. Um with an understanding of what those end times will represent. But if, if you have in your disinterest in God, in your preoccupation with what is happening today, rather than what it would be like in 50 years when you're long since in and out of the ground, body in the ground, but you'll be standing before God giving answer to God, to the one question I know he will ask you, what have you done with my son, Jesus, the Christ, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins? Only you can give answer to that. Only you. No one else. I think that's wonderful that God gave you all the responsibility for where you will spend eternity. When you close your eyes in death, your body is going to hit the ground. Your spirit is going to go to God. And God is going to talk to you. And he, I believe, quite simply, he is going to ask you, what have you done with my son? That's a thing that's very interesting. Prior to a person dying, no one knows what they communicate with God about. I have had a real bad attitude um, against judging anyone for anything. Because when we judge, we compare someone else's life to ours. Someone else's actions to what we would do if we were in their shoes. But you don't know what you would do until you would be in their shoes. 
You don't know. So you cannot take the risk of judging. Scripture says, judge not lest ye shall be judged. It's very simple. That's the problem. It's too simple. Jesus said one day, God, you use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. You use the weak things of the world to confound or confuse uh, the strong. But that's God's way. That's the way he chose. He chose a simplistic approach to people being able to be at peace with him in order to give the average person a clear kick at the cat, shall we say, to give you and I a chance to understand. Wow. That, uh, that joke me. I'm just going to get rid of that. It's kind of like that. Teach me to carry my phone too close to my heart. It's loud. God gives you the choice. Your choice is determined, determined by you alone. You can go through life uh, concerned um, about you, <laughs> you yourself. Not you, yourself, and I. Your I, maybe, but that's all. You have every opportunity that God could give you to be at peace with him through Jesus the Christ. I think one of the hardest things that I have had to address is forgiving people, but not judging them, not judging them. You do not know what someone is going through that would cause them to do what perhaps in hindsight would be someone, shall we say, stupid, silly. You don't know. Neither do I. That's why Scripture says, Judge not, lest ye shall be judged. So in your judging of others, if you feel the need to do it, you do it. God gives you that freedom. You can choose to believe in him or not. God gives you that freedom. But always there are responsibilities with the freedom that God gives us. It is our responsibility to ourselves, to God, to look objectively at God's intent, God's plan for your life, for mine. I have had recently the honor, the privilege, really, of meeting uh, uh, a man, very, very, very successful man, who my sons and I befriended many years ago. And I, I had a wonderful conversation. I don't repeat conversations. I don't use names either. But I was humbled by his kind words. But at the time, I, I, I didn't know that one day he would look back and say, those were kind words. I, I was shocked. Because you do not know, no one knows what impact you will have on another's life for the good. But if you judge uh, others harshly, you will yourself 
be judged harshly by God. I avoid things like that. I want to be, this is, let me, let me say it this way. I want to live today knowing that what I say and what I do, more important what I do than what I say, but that what I do will be remembered by someone. And they one day will look at you as I have been looked at, and um, you will have the joy and the privilege and the honor of saying humbly, thank you, God, that you gave me the words, the heart attitude that may well have touched someone's life. But if you judge others, you are affecting their lives, not necessarily for the good. If it makes you feel better, then judge away. But remember, there is a cost. Remember the scripture. Judge not, lest ye shall be judged. I had the most memorable time that I've ever had in my life uh, this past weekend going south. It was wonderful. And um, I, I will not soon forget, if ever, I would forget the conversations I had with people in sharing uh, my son's miracle, in sharing the joy of being at peace with God, the pleasure of running my old Dodge North and uh, watching in the mirror, uh, encroaching on beyond the speed limit, uh, quite markedly, and uh, watching a, a little truck come up behind me. And that little truck uh, was passing me. I like to make sure people pass me. I don't want to be passing everybody. Uh, I kind of want to hide in the crowd a little. I don't like crowds, but on the road, it's all right if it's not too crowded. Man, uh, slowed down when he saw a cowboy Jim written on the tailgate of the big Dodge. And then he, he put the hammer down and he went by me. And I guess he looked at me through the tinted uh, windows and he took his foot off the, off the fuel and uh, started to slow down right away. So I, I kind of stepped on the fuel in the old Dodge and, and uh man put his window down on the passenger side and he just started to smile at me. And he was pointing his finger at me. And uh, it, it wasn't the middle finger, okay? It was a very pleasant smile from a man that I, I didn't recognize right at first. And he, he, he just smiled. Uh, and so I, I, I took my hand uh, so he could see. And I, I hit my heart a couple of times and he kind of nodded and uh he he put the hammer down and and he beat me to fort mac i don't have to be first i just don't want to be last that's all but somewhere somehow some space in time that man and i had crossed paths it may have been just on my YouTube channel. It may have been my incessant waving at people, trying to build them up, encourage them, uh, allow them to know that I notice that they're there. I care. I think there is only one sin that you will ever be judged for by God. And that is the answer that only you can give um, as to 
what have you done when God asks you, what have you done with my son, Jesus, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross, that you might have a chance to seek forgiveness and accept his sacrifice, Jesus' sacrifice for your sins, completely. Absolutely, completely. I think that the worst thing that anyone can do is to compare themselves with others. Because you then have a tendency to put others down so that you don't feel too bad. I would rather have God take care of all those feelings that I have of rejection or whatever. Um, I take my emotions, all my emotions. Oh, if someone steps on my toes, uh, you'd know that I hadn't taken all my emotions to the crows. But enough of them to be humbled before God and to realize I am not God. I am not supposed to judge anyone over anything. I think I got the title to this, so I might just stop. God says, I just look away, present my heart to the Lord. It's called praying, but I get real out there and um, I listen for a response, still small, quiet voice in my heart. God says for me to bless you. I bless you in the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost. May you have a heart that is honest enough with yourself that you will seek God's forgiveness and that you will be more than willing to forgive those around you who transgress, do stupid things, but it's their life. <coughs> they and they alone are responsible for their decisions. You are responsible for yours. If I were capable of being remembered for anything by anyone, I would like to be remembered as a man who was fair, who honored God, whose hand was not too far from my wallet when I met people who were going through stuff that would lead to hard times. I would like to be remembered as a kind man who tried to live my life caring for others. Successful or not quite so, so successful as I would hope, want. But that's my choice. I choose to let my light so shine before mankind that they will notice that I've been there, that I do love God, that I care. This is the part that's going to be a, a shocker for you. This is where you end up getting off the throne of your life and letting God have control of that throne. I care more about others than I care about myself. It's my choice. 
I'm not perfect yet. On earth, I'll never be perfect. But I keep trying. Not because I want to be perfect, but because I want to honor God for his kindness and giving me a way of being at peace with him. It's hard to be angry with someone. Listen close. It is hard to be angry. Hateful. Hurtful. To other people and to be at peace with yourself. It's almost impossible. If you wish to choose to live your life so that people will remember you as being something that was not normal, you can do it. You just have to care for others more than you care for yourself. That does not mean you deprecate, self-deprecate yourself. No, it's not it. It does not mean that you give and give and give. That's silly. That's stupid. Because people then begin to be reliant on you to sustain them rather than they learning to trust God through hard work and proper money management to save. I save. Thus, I'm off work for another three weeks. I don't care. I go to work. I tell uh, supervisors, I don't work for money. I said, you know, put me on a hoe. Uh, I, I'd, I'd pay you 40 bucks an hour just to let me run a hoe. And then I, th I think about that and I think, that's stupid. But that's how much I love running a hoe. But I go to work to care for people. I have always tried to care for people. That's my reasonable service to God. I have not arrived, but I believe I'm headed in the right direction. God bless y'all. Y'all take care now. I, I I I came to Fort Mac and people said you 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 don't talk like like a retired rancher. I said, how does a retired rancher talk? They said, well, they say yee haw quite a bit. I never heard the rancher say yee haw in my entire life. But when I say how y'all doing today? People like that. I do that. I like it. I really do. Not because I'm trying to be something that I'm knowing. I'm just trying. God bless you. Y'all take care now. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day.